All right, going to do a little bit of a um, second part of the thing about the Baptist Church sex perversion scandal stuff and, and uh, why Baptists uh, have no scriptural authority for being in these Babel buildings. Um, I'm going to answer some of the attacks that have come. Okay, one that I saw quite frequently is that I'm supposed to get a real ministry. Uh, what a lot of people don't seem to understand, or maybe they don't know, or maybe they have conveniently forgotten, is the fact that I have been to what you would call real Baptist churches. I've been to every single flavor of Baptist church that there is. I've been to ones where they use the King James Bible, but the, they'll attack it from the pulpit. I've been to ones where they don't attack it from the pulpit, but they don't really believe it. I've been to ones where they profess to believe it, and they never attack it. I've been to every single type. I've been to Hiles types. I've been to Ruckmanite types. I've been, you know, through all the different types of IFB churches, right? And I've served in them. I preached in the pulpits, you know. There's videos here on YouTube of me preaching in the pulpits of these places. So to say I'm somehow, I've never been in a real ministry, uh, that doesn't work. Okay, I've been in those places. I'm qualified to speak against them. Again, I was raised in church buildings. All right? So don't act like I'm some kind of a weird fanatic that's never been in those places. And if I walked into a Baptist church, boy, I'd just be would i be converted, you know. And I'd now I'm just going, oh, this is where it's at. No, I'm the way I am because of being in those church buildings. Um, another one of the attacks, they'll say, YouTube is worse than church buildings. You know, if you want to talk about immorality, what are you doing on YouTube? Um, well, I don't call YouTube the house of God. Okay, I don't uh, attach special uh, holiness to YouTube. All right, I'm here on the internet. I'm here to preach the word to the world. I don't hide away in some little building someplace with my little suit and tie on and my little Bible under my arm going, you know, would you like to come to our church and visit it? <laughs> you know, go out into the community for outreach, you know, we're going out soul winning, inviting people to our little building. No, I put my face right here online and I say controversial things and I've gotten threatened and I've gotten all kinds of stuff. So don't tell me, oh, well, YouTube's not valid stuff. Well, why did Paul write letters to people? Huh? Pretty ridiculous. Um, what about Dr. Ruckman? Well, as I showed in the other video, uh, the local church, he says, and I'll say it again in case you haven't seen the other video, he says on page 37 of his book, The Local Church, he says... The modern movement is to, uh, so I'll skip that. Christians forget that once you put up a building, you are anti-New Testament. There are no buildings in the New Testament. Once you do this, you are in the state area and you needn't pretend that you are not, for you are. Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And I love the man. I respect the man. I think he's the greatest Bible teacher of the 20th century, without a doubt. Uh, I will recommend his books and things like that. I'm not some carnal little baby Christian that says I'm just going to throw out the guy because he's wrong in a couple spots. You know, uh, all the stuff that the guy's done and all, his, all the things that Dr. Ruckman has come out with and everything else, I'm not going to ever say the guy is not legitimate. All right. But he compromised big time and he knew it and he's going to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. Dr. Ruckman's going to see a lot of his rewards that could have been there burned up because he said that a church building is anti-New Testament. And again, I've had some of the brethren, you know, tag me. Oh, what about Dr. Ruckman? What about Dr. Ruckman? This is the standard, brethren. Not Dr. Ruckman. Not me. Not you. This is the standard. I mean, you know, it, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's stick with the next point here. Next point. Uh, well, first century Christians, I get this thing in the comments too. First century Christians would have had church buildings if they had been safe enough and if they had enough money and if they had enough resources. Really? What about Antioch? Where the disciples were first called Christians? That was a safe haven for Christians. Why didn't they build a church? Why didn't they build a temple? Why didn't they take up an offering to build some big building someplace? You say, well, that, that, that came later, brother. Oh, really? Uh, so in other words, God had a kind of an oversight there. He didn't, he didn't really, he just kind of 
wrote the New Testament and then went, oh, I should have said something about church buildings. Nuts. <sighs> Man. Boy, that was forgetful of me. <laughs> I'm, really? <laughs> you really believe that? Oh, no, brother, no. But, but you know, as time went by, Christians, it, it grew and grew and grew. And so we needed a place to worship and things. So church buildings magically appeared out of nowhere. Uh, no, the Roman Catholics were the ones that took the pagan Greek temples, the Parthenons, and they put Egyptian obelisks on top, and they have a church with the nice steeple. They're pagan structures. Catholicism was doing it for over a thousand years before any Baptist ever built their first building. The Baptists got it from the Catholics. The Catholics got it from the pagans. Why? Romans are pagans. Absolutely ridiculous. And by the way, you say, well, they didn't know about the church building thing back in the first century. Okay, what were they doing preaching in synagogues and getting thrown in jail for it? Huh? How about that? And, you know, I get accused, you didn't even quote any scripture. You know, I, I saw one guy and he's like, how did this video promote the gospel? <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, well, buddy, uh, there's a whole bunch of chapters in the New Testament that don't say one word about the gospel. It's about Christian conduct. You know, I get that thing, too. That's, that's another one of the things that cracks me up, you know. You should be winning souls. You should be winning souls. Win souls. Win souls. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm not supposed to instruct Christians on what's right and wrong. It's all about getting out there and winning souls, you know. Okay. Jack Hiles. Um, just trying to think of where this verse is at here. Uh, Acts chapter 7, verses 48 and 49. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? And... Uh, then they kill him. Uh, because he was speaking against their holy building. I'm going to find this one verse here. I'm trying to think. All right, I'm going to have to look it up some other time. I want to try to keep this thing fairly short. But it's the, the scripture where the, the, the Jews basically say that he has spoken against this holy place. You know. So, um, it's, it's, it, I don't have any notes for this thing. Sorry. But, you know, look it up. The, the, the scripture they, they bring against Paul, they say, or they, they say this thing against Paul. They say, you know, that he is caused riots and things like this essentially and he spoke it against this holy place exactly as you know a lot of people think that their church building is holy and which i'm going to be talking about more here as uh, we continue um Okay, another one. All right. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 5. We'll start there. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, check this out, by what power or by what name have ye done this? Hmm. Exactly as a lot of people do to me and other house church preachers. All right. And I'm in ministry. You know, that's I do video ministry. I don't I don't have a group that I meet with on a regular basis right now. I used to. I've done that. But right now we are focusing entirely on just getting videos out to people as fast as we can. Uh, we do witness to people in the area. We do. Uh, you know, we have met a few people in the area and things like that that are Bible-believing Christians, but they're busy working for the Lord. We're busy working for the Lord. So, you know, 
um, if the time comes that we're offline or something like that and, and uh, there are some new converts in the area that, that uh, we need to go and counsel them and, and show them what the Bible says and whatever else, hey, great, praise the Lord. But I, I can't imagine much worse than a, a social club of required every weekly, you know, every week meeting at a certain time and, and going there and talking about the weather and talking about blah, blah, blah. Ugh, no, <laughs> I don't think so. And that's why a lot of you people don't want to give up your church buildings because of the social aspect of it. But anyhow, uh, another one that I get, they say, um, what if a house church gets too big? You have too many people coming to the thing. Uh, what are you going to do then? You know, get a bigger house or something? Uh, well, if you're honest, you will realize and understand that uh, you're not going to grow a house church right now into the hundreds of members of faithful people. Okay, the way you get in lots and lots of people right now is by compromising, kind of following the uh, Jack Hiles method, you know. Uh, just bring them in by whatever means necessary. And yet, if you look at the average uh, church building and you whittle it down to the people that are really, truly saved and the ones that are really doing the work and things like that, it'll usually be less than 30, maybe 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Every single one I've ever been to. But uh, there's another thing. Not only are you not going to grow a house church that big right now if you stick with faithful people, but number two, if it gets so big, uh, why not split it up? Did you ever think about that? I mean, where in the New Testament are preachers just supposed to sit there and just get, you know, draw in the emulation of the people? Everybody come here and worship me. Where's this stuff at? 2 Timothy chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. See, you have a house church, you have people come in there, and you say, okay, I'm going to teach these men, and the ones that are faithful, I'll send them out, and they can start their own group. God did not intend for Christian camping. We'll have a special holy cities around the holy city of Pensacola and the whole si holy city of this and that and whatever else all across, you know, the the world. And we'll just have Christians move here and we'll all just gather together and have our good little time and stuff like this. And we need these huge multi-million dollar buildings so that we can get everybody in the same place. You're not going to find that teaching in the New Testament. And of course people will say, you know, well, house churches can have uh, sin problems just like church buildings can. Uh, well, they can, certainly. I mean, sin is sin. People are sinners. Uh, saved sinners is what the body of Christ is. But uh, when you have a church building, it, it the, the main argument here is not um, one can be more sinful or whatever. It's does it line up with Scripture? No. Okay, then God's not for the thing. If God was for it, he would have told you to do that in his word. Does that make sense? But I'm going to go over six reasons why church buildings are sin. Okay? Sin. S-I-N. Did you, did you hear me? Did you understand that? Number one, most of them are 501c3 incorporated. We read about that in Ruckman's book, telling young preachers to go with government incorporation. If you're 501c3, you are married to the state. You are not under Jesus Christ as your head. Jesus Christ says, preach against sodomites. The state says, don't you dare preach against sodomites. So we'll do it anyhow. Oh, so then you're going to disobey the government? You tell... We can't, I can't tell you who to vote for, but I can tell you to disobey these things here. Then you're anti-government. See the weird thing? You go to the government for permission to exist, and then you disobey the government. Hypocrite. How about uh, number two? They're pagan in origin. Again, church buildings just didn't appear one day, and a bunch of Baptists said, hey, let's build a building and call it a church. And it creates that two 
separate life, the, the two personalities, so to speak. Well, I wouldn't do this while I'm in church, but out here, you know, it's okay. And I'll grant you, you know, I, you know people say, well, oh, brother, but how do we do this and how do we do this? Look, the Christian, the body of Christ right now is in very serious turmoil. Uh, we've messed up a lot of things. We need to get back to the way things should be, back to the Bible. You know, that's what we need to do. And stop holding on to these pagan idols like church buildings. All right. And you say, well, but, but what about this? What about that? Hey, I'm not the guy that founded the thing. Okay. I'm just going with what the scripture says. You know, we ought to get some older preachers to say, okay, I'm going to go out and confirm small groups of people. The churches, like we read about in the book of Acts, go out and confirm them and make sure that they're taught correctly. Instead of saying, well, we got bills to pay, you know, we got to, we got to get people in here. We got to, you know, preach up tithing and stuff like that because we got to get this huge building paid off. I mean, what would happen if the body of Christ said, the truly saved said, we're selling all the church buildings and with the money we make, we're going to put it into Bibles and get a Bible to every single American, every single person in the UK, every single person in Australia. We're going to give everybody a Bible, the English speaking world will say. What would happen? Oh, we can't do that, though. We have to hold on to our buildings. And actually, too, the, the whole thing of 501c3 incorporation, if you study it, you study the laws and things of it, you can't sell the church building because it belongs to the state. Dr. Ruckman said so. You're anti-New Testament. I showed you the quotes in the other video. It's a problem. Number three, the third reason that church buildings are a sin. It's an incredible waste of money. The expense of the building, the upkeep, the heating, cooling, bus ministry, this ministry, that ministry, you're wasting a lot of money. Instead of putting your money into important things, putting your money into actually helping Christians that need it. Oh, we can't because we got this bill to pay. And uh -huh, Yeah, sure. Um, another one for you here. Turn to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Yeah, I gotta think of where the thing is here. Uh, let's see. Revelation chapter 13. Actually, we'll, we'll go to uh, verse 4. And it says here, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Let me ask you a question. Where do you worship at? Church buildings. What do you think is going to happen to your church building there, Baptist, if uh, when the rapture happens? It's not going to say if, but you know, when the rapture happens, who's going to get your church building? So I don't care. I ain't going to be here, man. I ain't going to be here. Well, if you're saved, you're, you're correct in that. You won't be here. The body of Christ is leaving before the Antichrist is revealed. But uh, do you think the Lord's going to be pleased with that? You built this pagan temple and you, you worshiped in this pagan temple. And then uh, you leave and the Antichrist gets it. Going to be a bunch of people worshiping Satan manifest in the flesh. And you're a church building? How about that one? Reason number five, the church buildings are sin. They've only been practiced, this whole thing of the old time religion. It's only been practiced for a few hundred years. What do you do with that? The oldest uh, Baptist church building in America is was built in 1700 in Rhode Island. Supposedly the one, the same group that Roger Williams founded. Although Roger Williams died long before this church building was built. I guarantee you he would not have been for it. And it was built with a state lottery to finance it. Again, watch my independent fundamental Baptist Catholicism study for the proof on that. And number six, the sixth reason why church buildings are sin is because you look like all other religions. You're no different. I mean, what really, if you drive down the road, um, I'll say it this way. Uh, 
if a Methodist church went out of business, <laughs> um, could you move a Baptist congregation into it? Sure. Absolutely. How about a Lutheran? How about an Episcopalian? Could Baptist take over it? Uh -huh. How much would you really have to change? You see? You see, the whole thing is you are making temples that you believe are holy. And that's another thing I've seen in the comments. People say, we don't uh, you know, affix any special feelings towards the building. That's a lie. That's a total lie. You're a liar if you've said that, if you've written that in the comments. We don't affix any special feelings towards the building. Yes, you do. I'm going to prove it. Uh, Sunday morning, this coming Sunday morning, you go to walk into your church building, and uh, you're the first one there. You have the keys. You can help unlock the thing. You're maybe you're the pastor or whatever. And you go to walk into the thing, and the door's been pried open. And you walk inside, and there's graffiti on the walls. There's stuff knocked over. You know what you're going to think? You're going to think to yourself, who would have done a thing like this? Imagine doing that to a church. Of all places, a church. To attack a church this way. You know why you're doing that? Because you do affix that church, that building, with being holy. Happened to the church building I was raised in. Calvary Monument Bible Church. Somebody broke in and stole some VCRs and people were just mortified. To, oh, who would steal from a church? You ever go into a church building and they say to children, don't run in the church? That's disrespectful. That's how Why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. If it's just a building and old, it's, God's not here. I mean, we realize it's the people, brother. It's not, it's not the building. It's the people. You know, why are you saying things like that? I mean, it's, it's absolutely absurd. So, you know, I can keep going on and on and on. And, you know, I'm not going to convince some of you because some of you, you have such a problem with idolatry. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I say. It doesn't even matter what somebody like Dr. Ruckman says, what he admits to. Um, doesn't matter. You're not going to give it up. Didn't You're holding on. Say house of God. Call yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God. My wife over here, she's working over here beside me, and and uh, yeah, she's uh, Sam Gip all the time. Good to be saved. Got to be in the house of God. It's not the house of God. All right. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I mean, you know, some of you are just completely ignorant of Scripture. You need. I mean, I I have sermons on this thing, and you know. Oh, good. What are the, what's the proof? What's the proof? What's the proof? Well, you know, don't be lazy. Actually watch some of my sermons on this very issue. But uh, give you a scripture here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. It says here, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Our bodies are the temple. And when we come together as Christians, when you come together to fellowship, and when I mean fellowship, I'm not talking about socialism, okay? I'm not talking about socializing about the things of the world. When you come together for fellowship, it should be, how can we work together to see people saved? Okay? What things are endangering us as, as Christians? What can we fight against? What can we? It should be organizing, all right, as an army, as a militant army for Jesus Christ. Not taking up physical weapons, okay, but spiritually fighting against the forces of Satan. That's what we're supposed to do, all right? And yet you don't see that with church buildings. You know, and again, of course, somebody out there screaming, yes, we do. We go out and we saw it and, you know. Okay, but you still got to go back to the thing. Is it in Scripture? No, it's not. And, and one of the great... Is it based that, on church attendance? Yeah. One of the greatest Bible teachers out there admitted it's not based in the New Testament. And my wife just got done saying here, you know, it's it, this whole thing of, of soul winning, it's based on church attendance. You know, and I've heard this thing. Oh, yeah, I led these people to the Lord. I went to, you know, door to door and I led them to the Lord and stuff. And they were faithful for a little while and then they fell away. So I don't know what's happened. You go out, you use high pressure sales techniques. You make people feel uncomfortable. You get them to come to your little corporation there for a while and it doesn't work out for them and they go off someplace. And I can't tell you how many times I used to go out door to door. All right. And I can't tell you how many times I've found people that are wreckages from Baptist churches. Their lives are wrecks. I remember uh, one brother I used to, we used to do it all the time, my brother Jesse Dulesky. 
and myself, we were out the one time in the town of Hopeland in Lancaster County, and uh, there was a guy, and he came out, and he's smoking a cigar and everything else, and he's like, yeah, I used to go to a Baptist church. And we ran into that a lot. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was before it blew up, you know? Everything fell apart there, and I left. They go right back to the world. You know, and again, brethren, uh, what are these Baptist church buildings? Okay, I mean, we have millions and billions of dollars worth of Baptist church buildings in America, not to mention the other ones. What are they doing to stem the tide of evil? Um, they're not doing anything. You know, well, that's because we need more of them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, it's kind of like the house is burning down from a fire and you say, what should we do? Let's pour on more gasoline. Yeah, let's 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 put more gasoline on the fire, and we'll we'll get the thing to burn that much quicker. I mean, give it up, brethren. Can you hold up your King James Bible in your hand and say, "I'm a Bible believing Christian in all matters of faith and practice"? If you can't say it, you need to give it up. You need to submit to the Lord in all things, not just in the things that you feel comfortable with. You see? That is going to be it for this little video here. Uh, I really I really pray that some of you just get under conviction and you say, you know what, it's time. I need to get away from this thing. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care. I want to be right with God. You know? Do it. All right? I mean, I used to be the whole Baptist church building, suit and tie. I, I went through that thing, and I grew out of it. I realized if I wanted to go to the next level of being a Christian uh, in terms of closer fellowship, uh, I needed to get away from that thing. So um, that's going to be it for this video. Were you going to say something else? Oh, and uh, every time a person says, uh, every time a Baptist says, I'm saved, but I go to church, how do you think the lost world you know, the lost world views Baptists crying, you need to go to church. And the and the lost sinners with a brain left in their head and a conscience left in their head, they're saying, they're no different than me. I go to church, but I hate it. Why would I listen to this guy mm -hmm. saying... Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that or not. My, we're Right now I'm doing this video, and this is where my wife has been doing a lot of her research and things. She's still working very hard on her big study um you know she does a lot of research uh, here at the ministry and uh you know so she's i kind of took her spot here because i've been working over at my desk and things but you know the point is she's working over here beside me at another desk and um we're just talking about this and stuff and she's she's saying you know again this thing of what really separates us as christians you know and you talk to a lost person you say come to my church they're going I've been to a Presbyterian, I've been to Episcopalian, I've been to Lutheran, I've been... To... You're just going to do the same thing, but slightly altered. Uh, why? I've experienced this stuff. I mean, how many atheists out there, you know, they'll say, I was raised in church and I'm no longer a Christian. See what happens? You know? I mean, and I've told this story before, I'll tell it one more time. Uh, a buddy of mine... Um, you know, was was out putting tracks on windshields in, in the town of Ephrata, there in Pennsylvania. And uh, he puts his track on this guy's car, and the guy comes out and he says, hey, take that off my car, I don't want that. And uh, he said, I have no interest in salvation. And my buddy said to him, he said, okay, well, he said, if you ever decide to get saved, please don't go to church. And the guy stopped that in his tracks and he went, what did you just say? And my friend had a chance to really witness to the guy, preach the gospel to him. All right? I mean, we need to be different. That's why we are a called out assembly. We're supposed to be different. And God isn't, it isn't that God wrote the New Testament and then as an afterthought went, oh, nuts, I should have said something about church buildings in there. Ugh. We're not supposed to have church buildings. If we were, God would have put it into his book there. I mean, he wrote a book that accurately prophesies the events of these last days. 
Revelation chapter 13 talking about the mark of the beast being in the right hand or in the forehead. Implantable microchips. God could see out into the future and know that that's happening. Obviously, he's in eternity. Why couldn't he see the church building thing and tell Christians, hey, when, when things calm down, build buildings and call them churches. And yet you can't prove one scripture saying that we should build buildings. Why do you do it? You better give up your idolatry.